CDL practice test, Illinois, Ev break, part 2. Question number 29. Which of these is true regarding the air governor compressor relationship? A. Cutout pressure is 100 120 C. B. When the air tank pressure rises to cutout level, the air governor signals a compressor to begin pumping air. C. The air governor is located inside of the compressor. D. The air governor controls the compressor. The correct answer is here. D. The air governor controls the compressor. Explanation. The air governor is located on, or near, the compressor, and its job is to regulate the amount of air pressure in the system. It does this by reacting to the air tank cutout and cut in pressures. When the cutout level has been reached, about 125 C, the air governor tells the compressor to stop pumping air. Conversely, when pressure falls to the cut-in level, 100 C, the air governor tells the compressor to begin pumping air. Question number 30. What must be on an air tank in an air brake vehicle? A. A lock. B. A trap door. C. An oxidizer. D. A check valve. The correct answer is here. D. A check valve. Explanation. All air tanks on air brake vehicles must have one-way check valves located between the air, compressor and the first reservoir. This prevents air from flowing out in the event of a leak. Question number 31. If you must make an emergency stop, brake so that, A. You'll definitely lock the brakes. B. You can use the parking brake before the brake pedal. C. Your vehicle will stay in a straight line. The correct answer is here. C. Your vehicle will stay in a straight line. Explanation. If you must brake in an emergency, Brake in a way that keeps your vehicle in a straight line while still letting you turn if necessary. You can use the controlled braking method or, in a vehicle without anti-lock brakes, the stab braking method. Question number 32. Checking the manual slack adjusters on the S-CAM brakes should be done during what step of the basic 7-step inspection procedure? A. Step 7. Start the engine and check brake system. B. Step 2. Check engine compartment. C. Step 1. Do vehicle overview. D. Step 5. Do walk around inspection. The correct answer is here. D. Step 5. Do walk around inspection. Explanation. Checking the slack adjusters should be done while the vehicle is parked on level ground in the wheels are chocked. This falls under step 5 the walk around inspection. Question number 33. If your truck or bus has dual parking control valves, you can use air pressure from a separate tank to a. Stay parked twice as long without using up service air pressure. B. Balance the service brake system when you are parked. C. Release the spring emergency parking brakes. The correct answer is here. C. Release the spring emergency parking brakes. Explanation. With a dual parking control valve you can use the pressure from a separate air tank to give enough air pressure to release the spring brakes and move your vehicle. This is very useful in emergency situations. Question number 34. The air compressor governor controls. A. 
when air is pumped into the air storage tanks, b. The air pressure applied to the brakes, c. The speed of the air compressor. The correct answer is here, a. When air is pumped into the air storage tanks. Explanation. The air compressor runs at all times while the engine is running. To keep the air pressure from eventually rising too high, the air compressor governor controls when the compressed air from the air compressor should flow into the air reservoirs. When air pressure drops to a certain level, typically 100 C, the governor cuts in and routes the compressed air into the storage tanks. When air pressure rises to a certain level, typically 125 C, the governor cuts out and routes the compressed air out of the system, into the atmosphere. Question number 35. What does the supply pressure gauge indicate? A. The amount of pressure in the braking system. B. The amount of pressure needed in the air tanks. C. The amount of pressure the air tanks are intended to hold. D. The amount of pressure in the air tanks. The correct answer is here. D. The amount of pressure in the air tanks. Explanation. The supply pressure gauge is used for measuring the amount of pressure left in the air tanks. Question number 36. How does letting up on the brake pedal release the brakes? A. The system releases the brakes through a combination of air being released and the brake levers being loosened. B. Compressed air is pushed back into the air tanks. C. The action releases the brake pads. D. Some compressed air is let out of the system, causing the brake pads and or shoes to disengage. The correct answer is here. D. Some compressed air is let out of the system causing the brake pads and or shoes to disengage. Explanation. When a person lets go of the brake pedal, the air pressure in the air tanks is reduced by letting air out of the system. This causes the brakes to be released. Question number 37. Pressing on the brakes as hard as you can, releasing when they lock up, then pressing the brakes fully again when the wheels are rolling is called a and to lock braking b impact braking c controlled braking d stab braking the correct answer is here d stab braking explanation when a person presses as hard as they can on the brakes releases the brakes when they lock up then press as hard as they can again on the brakes when the wheels have begun rolling. It is called stab braking. Question number 38. You are driving on a steep downgrade and have the engine and the appropriate low gear. If your safe speed is 45 miles per hour, you should not apply the brakes until you have reached what speed? A. 60 miles per hour. B. 55 miles per hour, C. 50 miles per hour, D. 45 miles per hour. The correct answer is here, D. 45 miles per hour. Explanation. On a steep downgrade. The brakes should be used in conjunction with the slowing action of the engine and low gear. You should not apply the brakes until you have reduced speed to your safe speed. When you do reach your safe speed you should apply the brakes gradually until you reach 5 miles per hour below your safe speed. Question number 39. All vehicles equipped with their brakes have A. A supply pressure gauge. B. 
an A use gauge, C. A backup hydraulic system. The correct answer is here. A. A supply pressure gauge. Explanation. Every vehicle equipped with air brakes must have a supply pressure gauge that shows how much air pressure is available for braking. Question number 40. When starting a vehicle with dual air brakes, pressure of should be built up in the system before it is driven. A. 10C. B. 25C. C. 200C. D. 100C. The correct answer is here. D. 100C. Explanation. Before driving a vehicle with a dual air brake system, allow time for the air compressor to build up pressure of at least 100C in both the primary and secondary systems more. Question number 41. Some vehicles, such as buses, have a separate air tank used to A. Enable the driver to disengage the parking brakes and continue driving normally. B. Convert the air brakes into an emergency braking system. C. Supply air to the braking system if the primary air tanks fail. D. Release the spring brakes. The correct answer is here. D. Release the spring brakes. Explanation. Some vehicles have a separate air tank used to release the spring brakes in the case of an emergency. This allows the vehicle to be moved. Careful planning must be used, though, as there is only enough air to move it a short ways. Question number 42. The stop light switch. A. Tells you when the air brake system's air pressure is low. B. Tells you when you need to use your emergency brakes. C. Turns on the brake lights when you brake. The correct answer is here. C. Turns on the brake lights when you brake. Explanation. The stop light switch is an electric switch triggered by air pressure. When you apply the service brakes, the stop light switch turns on the brake lights. Question number 43. Which of the following is the most important thing about hard braking? A. Don't lock the wheels for longer than an instant. B. Disconnecting the steering axle brakes will help keep your vehicle in a straight line during emergency braking. C. Never do it without downshifting first. The correct answer is here. A. Don't lock the wheels for longer than an instant. Explanation. When braking hard, don't lock the wheels for longer than an instant, which is done in stab braking. If the wheels stay locked, they will lose the grip of the road and your vehicle may skid or even jackknife. Question number 44. Excessive use of the service brakes may result in overheating, which can lead to A. Expansion of the brake drums. B. Increased contact between the brake drums and the brake linings. C. Improper adjustment of the S cams. The correct answer is here. A. Expansion of the brake drums. Explanation. Overusing the service brakes can cause overheating and expansion of the brake drums. The brake shoes will have to move farther to contact the brake drums, making braking harder or eventually impossible. Brake fade. Question number 45. Repeatedly pressing and releasing, fanning. 
the brake pedal may result in a no change in brake air pressure b a build up of brake air pressure c a loss of brake air pressure the correct answer is here c a loss of brake air pressure explanation each time you release the brakes some compressed air leaves the system and must be replenished by the air compressor if you keep pressing and releasing the brake pedal air may leave the system faster than the air compressor can replenish it the air pressure may drop to the point that the brakes won't work question number 46 if the air compressor should develop a leak, what will keep the air in the tanks? A. The tractor protection valve. B. The one-way check valve. C. The emergency relay valve. The correct answer is here. B. The one-way check valve. Explanation. Federal regulations require a one-way check valve or an equivalent device to be located at the entrance to the first air tank, open bracket, in a dual air brake system. There must be a one-way check valve at the entrance to both the primary and secondary air tanks. If the air compressor or the line connecting it to the air tank develops a leak, the one-way check valve will prevent the air from going out. Question number 47. A vehicle equipped with an anti-lock braking system, ABS, uses a light to warn that the system is not working properly. A. Green. B. Orange. C. White. D. Yellow. The correct answer is here. D. Yellow. Explanation. Anti-lock braking system. ABS. Malfunction lamps are usually yellow. Even if the ABS isn't working properly, a driver will still have access to the vehicle's usual braking functions. Question number 48. The modulating control valve allows you to control the A. Front brakes. B. Amount of pressure in the brake system. C. Spring brakes. The correct answer is here. C. Spring brakes. Explanation. In some vehicles the control handle on the dashboard may be used to apply the spring brakes. Gradually. This is called a modulating valve. It is spring loaded so you have a feel for the braking action. The more you move the control lever, the harder the spring brakes come on. They work this way so you can control the spring brakes if the service brakes fail. When parking a vehicle with a modulating control valve, move the lever as far as it will go and hold it in place with the locking device. Question number 49. What does the air compressor governor do? A. It turns on the air compressor. B. It stores the compressed air. C. It stops the compressor from pumping air. The correct answer is here. C. It stops the compressor from pumping air. Explanation. In an air brake system. The air compressor governor controls when the air compressor pumps air into the storage tanks. It stops pumping if the pressure in the tanks becomes too high, and begins pumping if the pressure becomes too low. Question number 50. The most common type of foundation brake found on vehicles with air brakes is the A. Wedge brake. B. S-cam drum brake. C. Disc brake. The correct answer is here. B. S-cam drum brake. Explanation. 
foundation brakes are present on each wheel. In North America as of this writing, S-cam drum brakes are much more common than wedge or disc brakes. Question number 51. Emergency brakes are A. Not required on trucks. B. Only required on trailers. C. Only required when transporting hazardous materials. D. Required on tractors. The correct answer is here. D. Required on tractors. Explanation. All trucks, truck tractors, and buses must be equipped with emergency brakes and parking brakes. Question number 53. The driver must be able to see a low pressure warning, which comes on before pressure in the service air tank falls below. A. 100 C. B. 60 C. C. 80 C. The correct answer is here. B. 60 C. Explanation. The low pressure warning is set to come on before your air tank pressure drops below 60 C. Question number 54. In a dual air brake system, A. Air tanks are shared between both systems. B. You must designate which system you are using. C. Each system has its own air tanks. The correct answer is here. C. Each system has its own air tanks. Explanation. There are two air brake systems in a dual air brake system. The systems share a set of brake controls, but each system has its own tanks, hoses, and lines. Question number 55. When should you use the parking brakes and air brakes at the same time? A. Never. B. When you're preparing to pull your vehicle out of a parking space. C. When you're preparing to park your vehicle. The correct answer is here. A. Never. Explanation. Never try to apply the brake pedal when the spring brakes are on. The combined force of the springs and the air pressure could damage the brakes. However, the brake systems on some, but not all, vehicles are designed to prevent this from happening.